Um, okay, this chapter um, tell us about uh, uh, how to build um, a plot with the ggplot package. And uh, it turns out to be very interesting because um, uh, it tells you about what what happened uh, behind the scene when when you uh, make a plot. Uh, so the learning objectives are understanding ggplot layers, how to control layers, and the application to we do some application to real data. Um, so the, the grammar of graphics is the, the ggplot package, and it, it is the meaning of the gg uh, starting um, the function of ggplot. And um, they, as we know, the, the plots are made um, layer by layer. And uh, to, to, um, to, to see um, these these things, uh, I've chosen this package, special AB. Uh, which is a, a package uh, that contain different data sets uh, and have both uh, spatial data and um, uh, uh, data, normal data set with cases and population. Uh, it, it's for uh, um, health uh, data. So for example, uh, the first uh, uh, package we use is this New York uh, leukemia data. And um, it is, um, as you can see, uh, inside each um, data set, there are more than, more, more than one data set. So we now select from the New York leukemia data and the geo data set. So the, the first data set is um, with the, the, first, um, the first variable. Uh, are the uh, codes, the FIPS codes for um, uh, the different location uh, in New York. And it, it's used as an ID uh, column to, uh, to make um, one uh, data set with, with all the other information that we found. Um, so there, is, there are cases uh, of leukemia in New York and the population in uh, different areas uh, and these are the this is the, the, this is the um, what is inside the data um, data set while in the geo data set you find the longitude and the latitude as well as the id column so first thing uh, to say is that when we um, make a visualization using ggplot2 um this is the first layer we build um so we have uh, a mapping um argument which contain an aesthetic function uh with the coordinates that um are going to appear in the canvas if as you can see if we do not add anything else to this first layer uh, the only thing you can see is the canvas without anything else uh, except the uh, the few things that we have just uh, uh, provided inside the first code. When we add a second layer, in this case, we tried just for educational purposes to add a geom point. Uh, we can see that uh, the canvas became populated with some points. And we can start uh, um, speculating about this data and say what, what, what is happening. For, for example, we can see that cases are uh, higher if the population grows. Uh, and so we can, we can now start to say something. In general, when we make a ggplot, we build the plot without thinking about layers, but what is happening inside the hood? when we add a layer. So inside the hood, when we add a layer, what uh, there is the layer function, the axe uh, under the hood. So this is a function uh, that is called for, called for combining data, stats, and geoms. And um, so as, we can even use the layer function 
um, without using the geom uh, or, or the other stat function. Um, but we need to specify all the argument inside the function, like the, the type of geom or, or the type of stat function that we want to use. Uh, and But we can add this layer function to the first layer of our plot. Uh, and we, we will see an example of this. So this uh, turns out to be very interesting because I didn't, personally, I didn't know that there was a layer function. Um, so this layer function is uh, um, a function with the, all the components that you can see, uh, exactly as uh, any other geoms, with the difference that when you specify a particular geom or a stat function, you do not, do not have the option of all the, the arguments, while the layer function has, uh, contains almost all the options. So what happens um, if I uh, want to see what um, um, for, for example, what happened behind the scene when I use a geom smooth? How is the geom smooth made and how it acts, basically? So uh, the layer of your plot can be populated with different data sets. So now we are going to join the, the data set for New York leukemia, the cases and the population with the geodata with an inner join by the ID um, vector. So now we have this new DF data frame, new data frame with the geocodes and the cases and the population. So Generally, the uh, so the, the geom smooth does fit a model. Uh, in this case, we use a Lois model, so uh, this would be replicated as a Lois model, and it generates a prediction about the trend when you see that bend uh, the ribbon thing. Uh, so it says more or less what how the data will um, behave. Uh, they maximum minimum level, and they are then the confidence intervals, but we don't go through that thing now. What we want to, to see uh, is what the geom smooth does. So um, in this example, we create a grid, which is um, um, in our case, a shorter uh, data set um, with 50 observation, and uh, which contain the average trend that we want to show in a secondary layer. So what we do is taking the EDF data set that we just made, uh, make a lowest model uh, with cases and population. So we are like predicting cases in function of the population. And um, we build a grid which is a shorter data set of 50 observation with what? With um, population vector made of um, a minimum and a maximum value of the population. But within this range, we take just 50 observations. And then we also add a cases vector with the predict value predicted value from the model fit that we have just made using new data grid. So if you have any question, please jump in. Uh, this is the, the head of the, the grid that we have just made. So we have a population vector and cases vector. The cases are the predicted values and the population are just uh, 50 observation within the lowest value, the, the minimum value and the maximum value. So the next step would be to, uh, to replicate, to, all this is to replicate the geom smooth. So next step would be to isolate the outliers. So the observation that are far away from the predicted values. And in this case, we use the recede function. 
uh, as you can see, so this is the, the summary of the model. And we use this to, um, when we use the Resid mod, we also divided the Resid mod. This is to extrapolate the residual from the model. We also divide these values by the uh, residual standard error. Okay, which is uh, extrapolated with, with this S value. So we have the standard residuals column and uh, the outliers uh, are obtained by filtering the, the value of the, our data frame um, on the absolute value of the residual greater than two. We have a shorter um, um, data set, which is the outlier data set, and which contains 16 observations. Okay, so what happens now? We do the first layer, ggplot, data frame, population and cases. Then we had the geom points as we did before. And then instead of just doing geom uh, smooth, we use the geom line. So this is uh, the third layer of our plot. Uh, inside we use a, a different data, which is the grid that we have just built and some features, some options. So as you can see, um, we have replicated the, um, the geom smooth uh, and you can see it from here that it is exactly the same. So basically uh, all the things that the geom smooth does is manipulating uh, data manipulation uh, the data set for extrapolating the outliers and then uh, using a geom line. Do you have any questions, any personal experience to share? I don't know, any concerns? Oh. <laughs> no? Okay. Le, dun, so, there was there was there were some exercises that I like it to um, to go through. They may be interesting. I don't know. Uh, there was this data set, and the the exercise um, was to be able to just replicate the the plot. So this plot to replicate this plot. Okay. So for um, replicating this plot and putting like these values at the bottom here. Um, the first thing I thought was that was the uh, MPG data set because of the, the name of on the axis. So I have summarized the, the values and extrapolate the mean because these red dots are the mean values. And then um, name it differently because it's grouped by class and then extrapolated the mean. Then uh, this text label and the past n equals to n is the things that lets you put uh, the value uh, down here with a geom text in the plot. So when to do this plot, you do the first layer, uh, as we know, with the data and the two uh, X and Y coordinates, and you group it by class. Um, because you, you'd see that uh, from, the, from the plot that there were like, this, the dots grouped uh, were the class uh, at each class. 
So you need to group by class. And then the dots are not just uh, dots, um, um, you know, they are jitters. So they are like, there's a, a little more uh, movements and there's a little difference between a geom point and a geom jitter. So they like, you have little more points and they're more, uh, they're more movement. They're then you have the geom points, um, which are these red dots. And uh, um, this uh, uh, I had to use the class data, which is a very uh, you know, short uh, data set compared to the original one for um, uh, selecting just the, um, the, the medium value. And then finally, you use the geom text, position stack v just zero, uh, so it's zero, to position the value at the bottom here. Did, did you know um, about that? Did you know about how to do this? Okay. No, but it looks really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's um, this position stack, basically, uh, lets you position the, the values uh, in, 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 so they are all in the same uh, this at the same level because usually when you do the geom text the text goes uh, here where where the, the red dots is so um, this is position identity no if you do position stack and then uh, establish a value for example zero so th they are all um, aligned to the zero position. Okay, so what is it? Okay, uh, let's go forward, and we see that the um, aesthetic mapping, for example, the aesthetic allows for some omissions. So you, for example, when you use the first layer and you have uh, uh, this uh, argument to put inside the first layer, you have data, mapping, and the aesthetic. In general, the X and Y inside the aesthetic can be omitted. So as you, you it may happen, if you notice, when you look at uh, a plot, how it's made, if you use just one type of data in the first layer, sometimes the, the X and Y are not being nominated. You, you can even non, not, do, do not use them. But uh, sometimes when, um, when you use different data sets within uh, more than one layer, more than two layers, so you, you use different data sets in one plot, um, it might release an error saying something about missing mapping. So that can be solved um, using specifying um, everything inside the layer. So if you write data equal and the data set and then mapping aesthetic and everything, um, the, the error, so, so the, the, basically the, the function works. So what manipulation happens when complex transformation are set inside the aesthetic? Um, this, the transformation, uh, as, uh, as a complex transformation, we, we do mean, we mean a log transformation, for example. So if we want to log transformate a variable, in this case is a diamond data set. I don't know if you have recognized the variables. Um, 
we can uh, even omit the, the X and Y and use it like this. But what happened in the, behind the scene is a call, is an explicit call to the dplyr mutate function. So basically in, underneath the hood, he up, uh, does um, a little of data wrangling using mutate function and uh, uh, make the transformation. So uh, just something to um, remind uh, that is the dollar sign is not allowed inside the aesthetic. So you, you cannot like, you, you can subset your data set if you want using, using the subset function. You can even use it, the pipes, but you cannot select uh, um, like one vector with the dollar sign because it doesn't work. Okay, so um, when we specify the aesthetic in, uh, in the plot, uh, up then some, uh, something happened and it is different if you position some uh, info, um, argument, some options inside a layer or inside another layer. So in the case, for example, these four options are all allowed and release the same result. Um, or more or less it depends, for example, if you put the color here or inside the geom point, if you add a third layer, that might be influenced by the position of this color argument. But in general, if you use these two, just two layers, uh, you can um, do all of these four different manipulations of the layers. If you have any questions, please just uh, interrupt me. Okay, so um, the use of, um, but um, le let's see what happened. For example, when we add a footer layer to, to these two, if we add, for example, a geom smooth, and we have specified, we now are on our uh, data set, the, the one on New York leukemia. So if we specify the color with the, uh, with the FIPS, so we expect to see the, the geom points colored differently for each FIPS. And then what happened to the geom smooth? The geom smooth is a different function. So basically he went searching for connecting dots of the same colors, which is quite difficult because uh, they're, quite, uh, they're all different. So in this uh, case, the, the smooth line doesn't show up. Even if you did everything correctly, but in this case, the, the color is positioned uh, incorrectly for you to see the geom smooth line. So the correct way is this. So to, to put the color inside an aesthetic inside the, the geom point function. So this way, the geom smooth doesn't get into the meaning of searching for colors, for connecting colors, but that's just the the, 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 the smooth line. Okay. So now a little curiosity, what is the different from difference from setting and mapping or mapping and setting. Um, so a map or mapping an aesthetic means uh, uh, using a variable. So I, I, I do a mapping because uh, I call a variable from my, my data set. So in this case, for example, um, I want to color uh, by cat 
set in the diamond data set and I put the color inside the aesthetic and the cut is not a specified color, red, blue, and green, or whatever it is, but it's a variable. It's one of the variables in my data set. So when I use mapping, um, I use variable. Instead, when I set an aesthetic, I use a constant. So my, I set the color to red. Uh, while I map the color to a cut, to a variable of my data set. So I can obtain the same thing uh, using, for example, uh, scale, color, scale, scale color identity, uh, even if I just set the color. Then if I do scale color, or maybe um, better to, to go through an example and see, for example, this is my DF data set with population and cases. I do geom point and I fix the color to dark blue. And I have the, the points colored dark blue. Then um, if I, uh, in, in my geom point, um, I put the color dark blue. So instead, uh, as you see, I'm, I'm not using, I'm inside an aesthetic. So I supposed to use a variable. Instead, I'm using a color. So in this case, the, the function doesn't work. So you won't be able to see the dark blue, but you see a, like a reddish color. What you need to do if you want to maintain this syntax is to, to add uh, a further function, which is scale color identity. But you know, this is just for you to. Now we see something interesting as well. Uh, in case of more than one geom smooth, we can use it in the plot. Uh, we can call it differently. Okay, so I have two layers. I, um, the three layers we have already uh, went through and made a smooth, geom smooth. Then I add a further smooth layer. I can specify the color for each layer of, of uh, for each smooth for each smooth layer, but um, I can even um, set a scale color viridis or any others available to uh, color them differently. For example, here you can see that this geom is a loss and this geom is a linear model. So one is linear and the other one not. Okay, so these are interesting. Uh, <clears throat> in this, uh, this part of the chapter, there's a list of all the geoms that can be used. Sometimes when you use a geom, you can uh, use just X and Y, or just X, just Y, or in other ones, like geom segment, for example, you need to use a, a X max, Y max, and everything. Uh, one that I found interesting, for example, is this geom quantile uh, that lets you, um, see the quantiles and this um, on the axis uh, is are made by, uh, with a geom uh, rug. Uh, you see that the lines that are more crowded, the parts that are more crowded, uh, it's because there are more points on that side. So you can see that what are the levels where um, more cases are uh, evidenced. There's, there were some exercises, like um, if you have any questions on this one, for example, to see all the geoms, you use geom underscore and then tab, and you can see all the available geoms. If you have any geoms that you want to go through and talk about, just jump in. 
we can see them. So there were some uh, exercises, for example, one question was uh, uh, display how a variable has changed over time. So I've chosen this uh, data set, economics, and did a, a geom line to see uh, how a variable changes over, over time. You, you, you're supposed to have a, a date, a time, time frame. So you have this on the x axis. Uh, on the y axis is your uh, dependent variable from the, the x axis. So in this case, population. And you can just draw uh, a geom line to see how it changes within time. And then uh, <clears throat> this ask it, uh, how can we just uh, see data set? So you can use my connection is unstable. So you can use, for example, the geom Instagram. And it requires just one uh, element in the aesthetic. And you can see the distribution. Then this was nice as well. For example, um, if I want to see the overall trend in a large data set, um, this is the trend. I've used the geom line and the geom spot. Then draw a map. And uh, this I had to for for using the um, this Scotland data is another one from the spatial epi uh, data set that I have uh, introduced it to you at the beginning of the chapter. Uh, this is a, a third uh, data set, um, the Scotland. Uh, data and it contains spatial polygonal uh, data set separate from the data as well as for the New York leukemia. So for using this spatial uh, data inside a ggplot you need to fortify the spatial data because otherwise you are when you fortify you like making the spatial data in the form of a data data frame so enough that you fortify, sometimes it does automatically underneath the hood, if you have a certain uh, type of spatial data. Uh, but for polygons, you need to fortify. And uh, so you have this data that are um, going to be used um, with a geom map. Uh, they contain uh, lat and long, and you need to um, use a map ID. For example, this is for making uh, a map with ggplot. So you use geom map. This is another important geom, uh, which contains the map uh, argument as well as requires the map ID. It's uh, basically exactly the same if you put inside the aesthetic in the first call, in the first layer, or inside the geomap works uh, as well. But one more thing that you need to add is the expand limits with the latitude and the longitude, because otherwise it doesn't work. So this is a way, one of the millions way the thousands way to, to make a map. And then uh, one more um, was how to uh, label uh, outliers point, outlying points. So you're not labeling everything with geom text, but you are labeling just the sum. Uh, those one which goes outside some a specified range. 
So in this case, you need to, you can use a pipe, for example, inside a geom. And uh, you need to, to make, in this case, a bit of manipulation for selecting, you, you make a new data set uh, with fewer observation, just the observation that you want to uh, label, basically. If you have any questions, do you have any questions? Okay. So the last two bit of this um, uh, this chapter are very interesting because we use the stat function. Until now we have used the geoms. Now we see the stat functions, which are quite a few as well. So there are uh, several stat function transformation. And what they uh, do is actually um, like make a new data set. They do manipulation transformation, and then you can extrapolate new variable from them. And for example, one interesting function is this, uh, the ACDF function to compute the empirical cumulative distribution plot. Um, this is another uh, data set from the, uh, from the one that we the Scotland data. Uh, in this case, the Scotland data contained uh, data for lips cancer, just for you to know. And uh, we have cases and expected values. So you have this first layer, and then you just add the, the stat ACDF for having this result, which is very nice. As well as using GeomX and StatBeanX, we can see this um, uh, with R if you want to. Then we can use stat summary. So this is one for making this nice uh, function. And the other one that's quite used quite frequently is the stat summary. And uh, it's for categorical data. The stat summary uh, allows you to use a function in a way that you can, uh, for example, color it. This is red. So the, the, the result of this call is the red dot here, while the result of this uh, other call with the function mean are these blue dots. So one way is to use stat summary, or another way is to use geom point and stat summary. We have already talked about that. Then uh, what else I wanted to show you is uh, that uh, we, for example, with the stat functions, we can use after stat. Okay. So this after stat density basically modify, uh, adjust the discount to a density, transforming to density values. And even the, the histogram is different, as you can see, it's slightly different. So the geom histogram is completely, basically transformed with after stat density. Yeah, my, uh, can, can you hear the music maybe? Can you hear the music? Oh, I don't hear music. Okay. Okay. Um, so the uh, last exercises were to identify the geoms used to, to make these plots. This is a QQ plot. There's a function QQ plot that makes this uh, 
kind of plots. Instead, with ggplot, you can use uh, stat qq, and you can obtain the same thing as a qq plot. And for um, drawing the, the red line, use stat qq line. So this is a normal uh, distribution and made as a data frame then because ggplot uh, wants data frame um, and then use this to with sample you need to um, populate the aesthetic with the sample argument and the sample it will be the um, the value uh, the, the mean value the sample mean values Okay, so the last one is these two difference between these two. How can you do it with ggplot? And uh, you use the geom uh, histogram to make the histogram, and then the geom density and the stack function for making these two. I don't know if you know about that. The geom density, for example, uh, this the, there is a little uh, addition about the um, the legend. I had to add this scaling uh, path um, because um, I'm, that that that's not uh, uh, so. You you don't need to do that. In case you can do that if you want to change the type. So, like if you do points, uh, you have a points instead of lines. In this case, we have paths. And uh, the legend has been positioned with these commands. And then the stat function, it's. Uh, <clears throat> I have specified the color because I have uh, added um, a vector, um, a little data frame of colors here, so that I could use uh, um, with scale color, ma color manual. So I can call them inside the aesthetic. And then uh, uh, for making the normal distribution, this blue one here, you do function the norm, density norm, and then the argument uh, uh, mean and standard deviation of your data. Okay, so I think we are uh, the end because these are the positions of um, when, when you do um, geom bar, which is different from a geom histogram and geom call, we have seen these things. Uh, so the positions are a first layer that you add um, inside, um, so it's an argument that you put inside your geom to, uh, and they are quite a few, and they release different results. So you can use position doge, for example, to have uh, all the different, uh, in this case, um, data, uh, group it, uh, and align uh, side by side to each other. Here they are on top of each other uh, and stack. So position fill, they fill the whole canvas, as you can see. And, and then uh, this is position jitter. This is quite interesting because, uh, and it's used when you have a few points. So like populate the, the, the plot a bit more. And then he asked for concluding thing, 
um, the difference be between uh, uh, geom jitter and geom count. So as you can see, if I do a simple with this uh, uh, MPG data set, the, the one for the cars and everything, if I use geom jitter, which is populating the thing and gives a bit of movement, I still cannot see very well what is happening. So like here, it's an, all crowded and, you know, instead with jump count, you see what happened? That uh, he uh, grouped the, the things in one uh, bigger dot. So for you to, to see the difference. And here you can use scale size area, while here you don't need it. I think uh, it's it's all for uh, for this chapter.